Greetings and salutations everyone, welcome back to more Divinity Original Sin 2. Previously we got to Stonehenge Gardens, talked to Tarkin, found some fights we can't really do, and we decided, well I decided to come back to Driftwood to do some particular things. In between episodes I did change everyone's attributes, I guess you can say. So, yeah, Venus 7 is sneaking or Fevery now. You can only go up to 5 in each point, but Fane already had to, so he's a 7 now. So I decided just, so I did that, um, Lucilla has Lucky Charm up, uh, Red Friends is Max Bartering, and I still have Persuasion. But down here there's some pretty cool stuff. Now there's two ways around this door. You can pick the lock. Which is what I recommend. There's a bunch of traps down there, so which I'll show. But let's read this first. Nothing there. We want to go over here. I think you have to investigate the barrels for something specific. Dripping with liquid source, this <laughs> barrel is sealed and marked with a cross. From the barrel you sense a familiar power. It thrums in your bones, in your soul. We're going to leave that be, because what we're going to do is we're going to have everyone just go about to do their own thing. I'm going to go up here. I was thinking I can stay with the Red Prince. I think that's actually a pretty good option right now. And Fane's going to go over here. Dripping with liquid sauce, this barrel is sealed and marked with a cross. From the barrel, nothing stirs in the dank and stinking basement, and yet you feel an imminent presence. Inside, you find not fish, but weapons. Powerful weapons. The kind of weapons the Magisters took from the hollow marshes. Yeah, we get some cool stuff. You get a Soulforge Blade and a Soulforge Crossbow. They don't want us taking the rest of them, though. No? But yeah, you do want to be careful because this can be a big fight. And these guys will explode when they die. So having magic karma at the ready is just better off. Stab him. Stab him. Flesh sacrifice. We want to try and guarantee that I get a turn anyways. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> it does a lot. But now we can just summon our Encarta and just do some stuff. This fight isn't too bad. The levels are around 9. You're supposed to get here early. It's just if you don't have enough PV or don't do something specific, you're not going to be able to do much. But we're here, so it'll work. Basically in this episode we're going to try to focus on gaining XP in any way we can. There's not too many, but we need to level up. It's just how it is. Here we go. Kaboom. Oh cool, we already leveled up. So now what we're going to do, we're going to use Wayne right here. This is Cursed Fire, it might not disappear, but we'll be safe. It does create steam. Who needs Magic Karma the most? As all of us. But probably Fane in this regard. I chose Red Prince. Why did I choose Red Prince? He doesn't need it. Eh, we'll be fine. Now, these are going to be our next targets, which we're going to have to Phoenix Dive just to get over there. I'm ready. Boom. Bring the Reaper for me. I clean the gods away. I clean you out. <coughs> takes shape, my friend. I guess while they take their turn, I can put up some points. I clean. For me, memory, one more in Necromancer, obviously. Oh yeah, I'm clicked off it. 
Oh, I did something wrong there, although I think I did. One person's actually fine having memory, to be real. Let's just sort out everything else. So, fame. Can you maybe hit him with this, honestly? He'll die on his turn anyway, just want to be sure. So now... Can I reach my Arcana? I can reach my Arcana, but... There's not exactly a benefit to it. So we're going to use some Necromaster skills right here. And then... I can summon a bloated corpse if I feel like it. Or I can just summon a totem. Which we'll just do instead. <coughs> Ooh. And you killed the other one. That just leaves two guys left. Which... No sir, might be able to kill. And on her AP, um... Yeah, she can uncanny evasion herself then. Just to be safe. Give up. Aren't you tired of fighting? Oh no, we're close. If I can get my friends over here, I might be able to do something a bit cheeky. No. Damn. Okay, I'll have my friends just go over here again. Paths interrupted. We'll have him go over here then. And we could use Chameleon Cloak, there's no reason now. Because if the Incarnate is invisible, it will not be able to actually. I think you could do attacks for opportunity now that I think about it, but I've never seen it happen. Chameleon Cloak is okay on the Incarnate, but I'm never worried about the Incarnate dying. To be completely honest, I clean the gods away. Let's see, we can summon a totem there. Then, if we were to get a bloated corpse, it probably won't do anything. Instead, let's just throw my physical armor. And look at that 357 max armor. That's how good Bone Cage is. Because I didn't know how it would work my first time being a Summoner Necromancer, but I wanted to combine the two together. Uh, what's that? Are you alright? What's that? Okay, oh! Fame. Went to the other fame for some reason. Right. Everyone just keep still and wait for the fire to go away. There we go. All the fire's gone now and we can do our level ups. So, yeah, I want one more Necromancer. Because if you take a look at Necromancer, you heal for more damage you deal. Similar to Polymorph giving you an extra attribute point. You simply get to heal more later on. I'm going to go for memory. As well. Fane needs constitution. And we are going to give him more Polymorph. Because he gets an extra attribute point. So you can get him up to 20 wis. So Fane is pretty much going to be first throughout the majority of the game. You can let's play your wings as well, which is handy. We are going to make Fane a slight polymorph, not an not insane one, unfortunately, because there's not too many polymorph skills I can think of him needing. But there's some good ones. Now, let's say she needs one constitution, so she's fine on health for now. 
And we're going to give her one more memory because she'll she's also high up there for having a ton of good skills. They don't want it in the game. And of course we do have some stuff to loot. Uh, come over here, Red Finals. There you go. Now you can all heal. And we do still have this chest that we can loot from. But yeah, that's not bad. And we do have the sword. It is a two handed sword, it grants all in, gives you one pyrokinetic. Does he have a pyrokinetic skill? No. But we are going to lose shield bash if we use that so I'm not actually going to take that. It is a unique item that's pretty good. It's just down to personal preference. I would rather have the ability to use shield up and shield throw in the end because that just seems better in my opinion. Because if you don't have a shield you obviously can't use shield throw. So we have a fish storage key. Right here. And a security log, which is here. No, I don't want to attack the table. Void-tainted crimson bean. Yeah, if you want to get any void-tainted fish for the stew, this is where you can get them. You can also get poison fish, which Undead characters can eat to gain health. Do I recommend it? Not really. But if you are desperate for all that sort of stuff, then you can go right ahead. You'd think I would be with how many times all these characters, and, well, with how much me and Fane die. But honestly, that's. Not really an issue. Healing isn't the issue for me, it's just being under leveled and under gear for fights. Which we're gonna try to fix. Let's see, the barrel they want you to open up the key is right here. One barrel of fish stands out from the others. It's sealed and marked with a cross. Something about it seems familiar. Oh yeah, it just places poison around. At this point you can use the arrow first skill, condensed cloud to make that all a poison thing. Oh yeah, Lothar has really high lucky charm. You can also get some paintings here which will be good for selling. There might be a quest related to those paintings, I'm not entirely sure. If there is, I've never done it. Careful now, that's a trap. Yeah, there is a trap here. Is that in there? No. Look out, I see a trap nearby. Yeah, there's a trap which, which just throws a ton of fireballs at you. But because we unlocked the door, we just got away from that. I do want to find. Get a stick for the report. Did you find anything? I don't give a damn who killed who. My orders were to catch Higber, and he slipped away. Source weapons here. No wonder the fish are rancid. By the divine, someone will suffer for their treachery. You must report this to Magister Julian at once. I shall remain here and keep a quiet eye on the hatch, should anyone try to remove them. So yeah, we want to go back over here, because Julian obviously left. But I think we can port this to the... Actually no, Julian is the one that's here. He was the one left behind. But we can report to him and I think it counts as a quest. Whether or not it counts for the dwarves, I don't know. Here I still am, and here you still are. A drift of bloody driftwood. Yes? Have you anything to report? The wrath 
bastards. Hit them right under our very noses. A marvellous find indeed. But I don't suppose you actually saw Loha or one of his cronies handle these weapons in person. A pity. But we mustn't be deterred. This smuggling operation must be part of the bigger conspiracy that I suspect is taking place somewhere in the treacherous Reaper's bluffs. I trust I'll continue to have your unmitigated support and loyalty as a matter of course. Speaking of loyalty, here's a little incentive to keep up the good work. Don't you let up now, you hear? There we go, 100 gold for that. One of these children has a quest. Hello, mister. The little boy looks at you. He picks his nose. You be careful. My daddy's a magister. No, he's not. His daddy's a fisherman like most daddies around here. We're waiting for our friend. He went for a swim. He'll be back soon. He went swimming all the way to Fort Happy. Fort Joy? That's what I said. Fort Joy. He's going to find his mother and bring her back. Cool. How did you know that? Mister, have you seen our friend Joe? Tell them the truth about Joe. They have to grow up sometime. What they don't know can't hurt them. Don't tell them. Kids are resilient. Tell them the truth. The horror grows on their little faces. No, that's a horrible thing to say. I bet it wasn't Joe. I bet it was someone else's leg in that icky shark. She bursts into tears, then looks from you to her and back again, then starts crying too. After a moment, the crying subsides. Ben and Harriet snuggle into you. You're cold. So where's Joe? <laughs> you know, I'm not doing that. But the little boy seems to accept the idea. I think we should go home. Come on, Ben. Thank you, mister. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, mister. They skip away, still children, but now somehow older than before. Well, I've never done a quest before, surprisingly. But yeah, that tells you about what happens with the shark. <laughs> Just doing a bit eat the guy. Let me check our line of quest. Oh, 17 minutes, right? That's a quick fight. Right for a return visit, are you? Well, we can sell some stuff. Why not? There is items that I want to get. We'll keep those oranges just in case we need them. We'll keep the sauce weapons in case we need them for another quest. I don't know about the paintings though. Mm -hmm. We'll keep those as well. Yep, yep. Wish them well, and let's see. Keep one telekinesis, up. one perseverance, one oh, HP. As as it, yeah, I guess. Because instead yeah, of yeah. any combat yeah. abilities, was it not there? Oh yeah, you can actually put up skills for ranged weapons, dual wielding weapons, having a single-handed weapon. Now all that stuff which is handy that you have leadership perseverance and that. I just never use them. I'll be completely real. I've never found a reason to use them. Hmm, that's not gonna be good enough. Yeah, that's better off being sold later later down the line. But what we'll do is actually go and look for the drawers. Luckily, I know where they are. And whether or not Garvan is fine, I guess not. But you can find the loot and keep it for yourself if you really wanted to. Oh yeah, Papa Flash is here because we end up icing him. I forgot about that. Because there was a, there was a recording I did. Where... I fought him and he ran away. But yeah, we're gonna take his face because he is a dwarf. We're going to need it to make a, a second mask of the shapeshifter. Oh, Ooh, dick pile, nice. I, need a shovel. I don't need a shovel, we have the red prince. Mm. 
We get a haste scroll, which is pretty nice. If you get a blank power connect skill book, you can make a haste skill book from that. What we want to do is go over here. Because Loha is in there. What do you want? Boss is busy. Good. Boss could use some good news. Listen up. Don't waste this time. These are explosive times. Be respectful. We're not here to chit chat with the likes of you. Alright. I brought you up from girl to woman, Marla. Like you was my own. This. He lifts his right arm, showing a white bandage beneath his ribs. A wet red spot shows through. This ain't the thanks I expected. Who sent you? <laughs> the formidable dwarf slams his fist on the side table. You hear a loud crack. Enough! Do you know they killed Anna? Do ya? Start talking sense or I'll take that tongue right out of your mouth and fry it for supper. Bart! Kate! Get her to talk or bleed her out. She ain't one of mine anymore. His sneer travels from the restrained dwarf to you. And you. You better have a damn good reason for coming here. Hey, let's talk to Loha. All sitting here now. I hope for your sake you've got good news for me. Where was he? Hmm. Trying times, you understand. Can't afford to waste time on Johnny No Nothing. He winces loudly and holds a hand to the bandage on his side. The large red spot in its center has grown larger and wetter. Family dispute. Lucky for me, she caught an old wound. Scar slowed down the knife. So, how do you make it out of Fort Joy? I've got to say I'm impressed. I love a good story. Here's one I heard lately. A group of strangers landed on the beaches outside town. Meister Seavers people. You one of her little seekers? Chasing down Godwoken and begging them to save us all. So? What do you want? Ah, I should have guessed. I could help you, but last I heard you was working for the Magisters. Big shots at the boats. Now, why in the name of all the Earths would I help a worm like that? An unpleasant smirk twitches around the corners of his mouth. Right. I reckon I could help you out, depending on what you can do for me. He gestures towards the bandage across his side. Had a bit of family trouble lately. My girl Marla got it in her head to come after me with a short blade. That ain't like Marla. Ain't like her to pull the silent treatment either. Something's going on. And wouldn't you know it, that blade she used wasn't any normal bit of steel. Belonged to another of my people. Guy's name is Mordus. Bit of a loner, but smart as hell. I sent a few guys to go check on him. See if he knew what had got into Marla, but no one can find him. I'd like a word with the guy. Glad you see it that way. No one's seen him in a good few. I've got some people checking out his house near the tavern now, though. Tell them I sent you, and they'll let you know what they've found. Truth is, they might be glad to see you. Reckon a sorcerer will have better luck finding one of their own. One more thing. Like I said, Mordus is a sorcerer. Maybe even one of the ones Steve is after. If there's something you want to find out from him, you might want to ask before I have my word with him. Here, you can take this off my hands. More suited to your kind, really. Good luck. We do get a fancy dagger, which grants a skill of your tendons for doing all that. So what we'll do is we'll give it at the fame in place of chastity. What's got into you? Yeah, that works. Because now we have Rupture Tendons. 
and we'll do his quest. We will probably sell him out as well to the Magisters. But only after this entire quest, because you might be able to learn about source mastering from this guy. This must be the place but this is the house he wants. Looks unassuming enough. What you want to do is just pick the lock. And side because, well you can sneak around the side, I just picked the lock anyways. We'll have Fane pick this lock as well. Because this person doesn't know a Fane. And we'll talk to Glenn and Grim. The is unnaturally still. You might mistake her for a corpse, were it not for a slight twitch of her eyelids. She slowly opens her left eye, then her right, and wipes away the slobber. What's it to you, slow wit? The dwarf unfolds her arms and shoots to her feet. All right, elf. I'm glad Lohar ain't left us here to wither. Those brutes are taking their sweet time down there. I've got to send word soon. Who knows? Anything that gives away what Mordus has been up to. Probably got all sorts of tricks for covering his tracks, but the goons downstairs should snip out something. Get to it then. But tell the lunkheads that Glenn has sent you before they bash your brains in. Hey, we will now head down here. And there's people stuck behind here. But we already know how to free them. It's just lava. Dagger elf, you here to free us or kill us? The male dwarf expels two lungfuls of air and glances happily at his companion. We've only been fretting here for a few hours, but it's felt like days. That snot nosed priest's as slippery as a snake in a Nile drum. Ain't found nothing that lets on what Morris is up to. Only thing we managed were to close that door and get us stuck. And if there's another door out there, never could find it. Lohar ain't gonna be pleased. Ain't no telling where that priest has gone to. Started acting all funny not so long ago, then flew the coop. Well, at first, he was just buddying around with Lohar and the rest, you know. But then he'd start looking all sickly and run off for a day or two. Then some stranger tried taking old Lohar down, but got himself caught and tied up. Ain't no coincidence Mordus went hanging around then. She taps a finger against her forehead. A woman knows things. Nothing's getting past me. Best we head off then. We've got business to attend to. And yeah, these two are free now, but I just want to check something. Right, so we're going to put a stand over here. Actually, we'll just put a stand over here. Because there's a couple things. If you walk over that way, the door closes because of that. But it is stuff to loot, which we're just going to grab it all. There's a pillow, but we don't need it. Move that, and there is a book. Which we'll read. And there's a letter to Mordis, which... We'll have Lohar will want to know of this. Yes, he will. Well, this we are locked, but you can yes, interact with a statue if you want to. But you have to have a flying skill or a teleport skill. I'm just going to use a pyramid to get out. Of it. I've spotted something. And we have we have spotted something, apparently, which is this little lever. A skull. It's missing an eye. As far as looks go, this one's pretty macabre. You do need to get an eye, but there's two ways around us. Nice. Seems like I've got a real talent for this. Yeah, you can just pick it. And we we'll go down this hatch. And we have a little something down here. 
You have a tile puzzle. Every time you step on a tile, it will trigger... Well, something specific. But if you have multiple characters on different tiles, it will overlap some stuff. I will show the solution right now, but I'm going to have to search it up. I don't remember how you learn of this. Ah, yeah, that's how you can learn of it. So if you use Spirit Vision, you see the pattern right here. I'm going to just separate everyone and show what I know of it. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to need two vases. Could you use the vases instead of characters? Okay, so I'm the one that's going to move this. I'm going to move this right there. Target is not too far, game. Right here. That is the solution. Well, the easiest solution anyways. So now by going down here, well, we have some stuff. Some mugs of blood, all sorts of stuff. And there's an undead here. Be wary. The urns will shatter. The bones will rise. The glowing corpse looks to you. The erratic rising and falling of its stern is accompanied by melodramatic gurgles. Come, come to me. The creature murmurs a series of noises, vague but not quite. Its head leisurely lolls towards you in response. Freedom, a single touch of the second from left my freedom and theirs. The creature is quiet once more, save its constant wheeze. Yeah, that does tell us what we need to do. We need to press second from the left, which I'm pretty sure is this one. Free. Yeah. Free However, oh yeah, he's an ally. We can save him. And all of these parts are going to explode, but that's their turn. Is this... It's a fight against level 11, so we might be able to do that. <coughs> the strategy is pretty simple, though. For this fight. And we do have a source orb as well, which is going to be great. We can now craft another mask. You do find source orbs just all around the place. I think you can use a skill on Earth Essences. To, well, not on Earth, this is just on essences in general. That will allow you to guess very specific things going for it. Let's just stab him. Cover this. Right, watch your tendons. There. And six on. Him. Because now if he tries to move, he's just going to take high amounts of damage. That guy is fine, just the way he is. I will target this guy, I think. Just get the incarnate all over the place. Now you can give your incarnate 
source points. I don't know if they can get a source infusion now. But we'll not worry about that. So, uh, that guy has pretty good armor. That guy has no magic armor, which we can take some advantage of. We'll go for a, daz for a dazing bolt on him. I have no go here. And we'll give him one favorable wind. Just to be safe. That's what red was. He can go after this guy. It'll take one AP to get up there, which is all good. And wham. Yeah, he's not going to move because of rupture tendons. That's pretty much how they will work. But that's why he did it. The enemies are quite smart on Tactician. Is that what we're playing on? Tactician? No, we're playing on Classic, ain't it? Yeah, we're playing on Classic. They're pretty smart on Classic as well. If they take damage from moving, they'll not move. All that stuff. Well, that is nice of him. Okay, really want to summon water. And I guess the way Fane's no, Fane's frozen, that's why his tongue was skipped. He might not have been frozen out, I don't entirely know. My turn also got skipped. This seems a bit strange. My turn's getting skipped for no reason. Why was this says turn skipped? Jeez. Hey, we're going to do this. And Mel on everyone here. Oh. Dusty Bones, that summons a Enchanted Bones. We can never get that skill unfortunately, but it's kind of cool sounding. Okay, we've got now, so got him, but better off taking this guy out, I think. Bam. Yeah, he can't come near us because he'll just get enchanted. Did he just use Staff of Mages on himself? He just healed them, didn't he? He's healing them! He's supposed to be an ally, why is he healing them? Fading. Do that. Do this. I'm Canyon Beige Armor, sir, herself. Doing that. I'm a Frost on low sir, just in case she needs it. And then we're going to use. Is this Cursed Fire? It's Cursed Fire, but what we're going to do is use Wayne. That'll put us all in steam so we can be a little bit safer. Because it might miss. Missed one of us, which is good. <laughs> What's this magic armor like? Oh, physical armor. We're knocking him down, then knocking him down. Basically, stopped him from playing. Then we'll knock him down again. Just need to hope that. This guy, the desiccated undead, just doesn't heal him again. Because for some reason, that's what he wants to do. Don't heal him. I think his weapon is poison as well. That's the most annoying bit. Hey, we can show off. Spread your wings. Which 
It takes an action point but gives Fane the skill of flight. Which now we can go to whoever we feel like. Basically an extra teleport skill like that. It's fantastic. The only annoying part about it is just having to use AP just to get the skill, but eh. What can you do? And we'll go for global cooling. Okay. I need to use leech on someone. Because I need to heal. Dan. I don't need to worry about healing myself just yet. Instead, we'll go for low 7. Rally and cry to heal up. I could have summoned a totem, but I want to keep low 7 up. But I want to keep it alive. So. Yeah, the overall our magic coming. We're not going to be able to do anything with that. Instead, we will daisy and bolt him. And staff and mage is him. I'm okay, I'm safe for now. Okay, so. Do damage to both of them. And we'll smack him. He's still knocked down. So now we can try roll it maybe, but I actually want to get as close to him as possible and do roll it here. Because that kills one. Then we'll end our turn. Red Prince is fine. He's charmed, perfect. Excellent. I see what he was going for. He was trying to heal Fane. It just didn't work. But yeah, Flight has no cooldown. Which is good. And which one's moving next to him? Can we claw for him from here? Target is too far. Right. So we'll do this. Fly on over. Claw form him. First aid on the sir. Doing it. Doing it well. We will not infect them. Have to do something now. Can I teleport there? Target is too far. They're not too far. I'm getting KO'd if I don't do anything. Do I have poison on me? Yeah, I do have poison on me. I'll have to buy time. I'll put up my physical armor. They probably didn't need to teleport me, but they did. They help so. Now we'll keep Lose here. Do this. What did I do? Okay, I did kill one guy. That's what I wanted. Oof. This guy is the next big issue. And he should die. Yep. So we're all good. We're gonna have to on kind of walk over here. Face gonna slip. 
Fane also needs healing. That's nice, ain't it? We'll do that. It does take a little bit of constitution, but it will help us in the end. Uh, what is Fane's armor like? It needs magic armor. You can drink that. Probably the first time I've ever used a magic armor potion. Alright, yeah, I was dead that time. There was nothing I could have done about that. Um, you know what? I am better off just reviving myself. Then I'll staff a major Sam. The second of Steven Cold. Ed Prince needs to go all the way over here. I was meant to pick myself, but I chose Red Prince for some reason. And that won't reach me, so we're just going to have to hit them. Ah, but I do get a turn from this, so. Do this. An easy power infusion. And another infusion. We've won this fight. Knock down. Punch down. Just hit them. We'll just end our turn because they can't do anything. And I will leech them. I didn't want to do that. I want to be in the conversation with everyone. The creature harumphs. You free the master of the magical arts. For that, I'll leave you alive and untasted. For demolishing Mordus's minions, I'll give you a skill book of your choice. Choose your subject. Now you can choose a skill book, but I'm going to ask if you can teach me anything about source. I offer you life and learning, and you're still begging for more? You're wasting my time. Here, just take a book. Its wisdom might do you some good. Speaking of which... Allow me to share some wisdom of my own. The undead creature bears two rows of broken, cratered teeth. Stay out of my way. That's curse your water water and curse your blasted machine. But yeah, you can choose a skill book or you can ask him to teach you about source. He gave me a Shackle of Pain book, which, you know, Shackle of Pain is quite good. I was hoping he would have taught me saucer because I think he does if you do the white stuff. We'll not worry about that. We're instead gonna open these up. Oh we got some good some good stuff right there. We got a large masterworks wound, which is a better version of a master's wound. But we also got a wound frame of power, which increases the power of a boon that's combined of it. So if we combine these two together, boosh. 13 strength, more physical armor, more magic armor on amulet. Just fantastic. <clears throat> so what we could insert it on. Perhaps on this. Do you get maximum physical armor from that? I guess we'll do that. No reason not to. And Red Prince's bag. Yeah, he has all this stuff, which is fine. Now, he does have some cool stuff, which I think we'll try to tackle next episode. So, let's firstly identify some stuff. Because we have unidentified shield, which is definitely going to go on the Red Prince. So give him a new shield, and long last. 
So now he'll do more damage. And the amulet. There's one in scoundrel and one in leadership. This is one that you could take. If you wanted, but that's probably better off on the Red Prince, to be honest. You can give one Scoundrel to the Red Prince, which, let's see, if you take Scoundrel, increase maybe speed and boost your critical modifier. That is probably better off on Fane, actually. Yeah. I lose damage, but that's honestly fine. And you can consume a source orb, you can use it as a wound as well, and it will do some pretty cool stuff. What we're going to do is make our lizard mask of the shapeshifter. Because I'm going to need that later on, for a particular reason. It's something I'm going to experiment with, but yeah, let's see. What else can we sell? This, this, this. We need to keep that. We already have Shackles of Pain, so we don't need to keep it. We're actually just going to sell these paintings as well. Get some free money from it. And uh, Do we have any new skills? We can buy some summoning skills. Is there a reason to? Not really, but I might. But this is where I'll end the episode. Next episode, we'll see what we can do about that desiccated undead. So I will see you guys next time.